All right, guys, back to work. Back to work. Hope you guys enjoyed the weekend. Let's go make some more money this week. Boy, markets made a big drop down, big move down this afternoon. And we got war heating up in the Middle East right now. Put those two clues together. Big move down today. War escalating, war heating up in the Middle East right now. Those two clues pretty much tell us exactly how to make money on Tuesday. I'm going to go over why that's important. By the time we're done tonight, you'll have an easy roadmap to make some money as well. Before we jump in, though, I talk my favorite trades for Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hopefully by now you know you don't want to miss tomorrow night's video, so make sure you subscribe. And if you like these lessons, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out. Give me a hell yeah down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, supporting the channel. But enough of the intro, though. Let's get ready for Tuesday. Let's go make some more money. Money on Tuesday. Charts are ready to go here for tomorrow. NASDAQ, triple Qs are ready. S&P and the SPY is ready. I have three really important clues on these charts right now that are telling us where the winning trades are going to be for tomorrow. I see one of those three clues is right in front of us right now on these 60-minute time frames. I have bearish market right now on the S&P and the SPY, and of course, bearish market right now on the NASDAQ and the triple Qs. I like to use the 60 minute chart to give me that overall directional bias. It tells us where the odds of success are stacked in our favor, but that's only one important clue, right? There's two more important clues on our tick charts, which will help us time the perfect entries for tomorrow. There are three things on my radar for tomorrow I want to be aware of. First one is that industrial production number at 9.15 Eastern time. Later on in the day tomorrow, we hear from Jay Powell again. He'll be speaking at a, at a keynote speech, a roundtable discussion at 1.15. This is not his testimony, but anytime Jay Powell speaks, we definitely want to listen. But the third thing, of course, is, is the most important thing this week. Right now, it's all about that kind of escalation of war heating up in the Middle East between Israel and in Iran. I'm sure everyone has seen the headlines in the newspaper. So that is a big factor for tomorrow and will play a big role in our game plan, kind of this war strategy, which we haven't had to deal with a lot lately, right? It's been many, many years since war has broken out. So this would be a good class for you guys to learn the techniques we use when markets turn bearish in an active war environment. So keep those in mind, though, right? Industrial production, 915, j at 115, and I think we'll see overnight here tonight, next few hours here, what's happening in the Middle East. And that will be a big part of tomorrow. Back to our charts, though, because it's good to know when the news is, good to know the geopolitical stuff affecting these markets right now. But no matter what happens in the news media tomorrow or what happens in the Middle East, the chart is where we trade off. The money is made on the chart. So let's now dive in. Let's talk some more charts here and cover my favorite trades here for tomorrow. We'll start first right now on the S&P and the SPY, and we'll wrap things tonight, of course, NASDAQ and the triple Qs. I mentioned earlier, there are three important clues we, we have right now in the charts. One of them is this bearish market overall, but we don't trade off 60 minute time frames, right? Time charts are so much more difficult to make money with, in my opinion. I think tick chart, this of course is a 7,000 thousand tick chart linked up top there in the upper left hand corner we use tick charts because tick charts are better for pattern recognition and patterns are a big part of how we trade every day in our trade room. And by the way, if you're watching for the first time right now, this is the 21 EMA. It's one of the only indicators we use every day to find lots of winning trades with members in our morning trade room. Now, there are two really important clues here on this tick chart. One of them is this huge move going lower. Anytime we see a big move in one direction like this, we know that I don't want to sell low, right? I don't want to sell low. I want to sell high. And to get that, we use get some sort of a two-legged pullback and a retest of that low. Anytime we see a big move in one direction like this, we don't want to chase the market lower. I want to sell high. And to do that, I'm looking for a two-legged pullback to short back down to retest that low. Now, heads up on this. There are four different variations of how two-legged pullbacks work. So I think most of us know the idea of a two-legged pullback, but I'm going to show you guys how we time the better entries in the trade room. There are four variations of this. We'll talk about that as we go deeper 
into the video. The second clue tonight is this previous trading range, right? There was a big old range there after that CPI report came out. What was that last Wednesday? Anytime we see a range breakout like this, we always look for a breakout pullback. So we know kind of the edges of that range are right there. We know that bears would love to get a breakout pull back and another leg going lower. Now put those two clues together. A big old move down and a range breakout. It's pretty easy to see right now that it looks like the best money tomorrow is probably made on a two-legged pullback. Now every once in a while, every once in a while, after we see a range breakout with a big move down, there are two different types of strategies I look for the following day. The most common is a two-legged pullback. But there's one other type of setup or strategy that every once in a while we're going to get. We're going to cover that a bit later on in the video, so I'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the end. Let's talk first, though, about that two-legged pullback. Because, again, two-legged pullbacks are easy in theory, but timing the best entries on them can definitely be a whole lot more challenging. When I think of a two-legged pullback, I'm thinking about a measured move. In the free video class, we talk a lot about measured moves, right? Measured moves, I want to get above the moving average and I want to think about that two-legged pullback that goes a little bit more than a measured move. I can't predict how big that first leg will be, so I can't tell you exactly where it'll be right now, but think about that two-legged pullback off of that low, a bit more than a measured move. Now, once we get up into that two-legged pullback now, remember, I don't have a crystal ball. For all I know, it'll keep going a bit higher. I can't pick that top. All right, we're not gonna we're not gonna blindly sell into that two-legged pullback. It's just too risky. What I'll do is I'm gonna use what I call a failure pattern. In my free video series, I talk about two try failures. So bulls trying once to keep it going higher, bulls trying twice to keep it going higher. Let's trap these buyers in. Again, it's a very strong bear market right now. Once and twice, and think about it. If you're stuck long, where is your stop loss? My stop is right there. Let's run those stops squeeze those stops, trap in those buyers, and run back down and basically use their stops to fuel that move back down to retest the low. Now, pay attention really quickly here because oftentimes these two try failures before we go back and retest the low, you'll get that nice, easy bull trap pattern. Now, bull trap patterns are pretty simple. We talk a lot about these in the free video course. It's a lower low in price and a move just above that prior high. So again, this lines up perfectly, right? It's a two-legged pullback, the underbelly of that trading range. Again, I wish I had more guidance on exactly where that two-legged pullback will be, but at least you know, right? It's one leg, two leg, a bit more than a measured move. And again, don't try to predict the top, right? Trap those buyers in, let them try a couple times, right? And then grab their stops and sell into their stop loss. And don't forget, as it rolls back over, don't chase after, right? Don't chase after it. Look for that, in this case, a bull trap pattern. It's a lower low in price in that move right above that high. Now, I mentioned before, there are a lot of variations of this. For example, we oftentimes will get stuff like this where we'll get a two-legged pullback. We'll get that nice, easy winner going back down again, one, two, but for whatever reason, they hold the top of this high right here and they run back up and try it again. All right, so in this case, we already have our one-to-one -one target. The stop has already moved down to point of entry. The risk is off on this trade. It's still a winning trade, but because that two-legged pullback is sometimes so strong, oftentimes that momentum will carry this and retest the high. This is not a reversal, okay? We call these double top reversals. Once they get back to retest the high, do it again. All right, do it again. Again, don't pick the top up here. Remember, overall bear market, underbelly of that trading range. This is a horrible spot to be a buyer. We're not a bull market right now. Once those buyers try once, try twice, bingo. You got them right where you want them. Now you're trapped. Now those buyers once, twice, their stops are sitting duck to get hit. And again, as it drops off that high, what's the pattern? It will always be, always be lower low in price and a trap right above 
that high. This would be, of course, a double top variation of that two-legged pullback, that buyer failure pattern into that bull trap combination. And one last kind of variation of this, one last variation. Sometimes we get this two-legged pullback, it pops up, but there's so many bears out there waiting for it, it gets whacked right back down and it begins to grind on the way going lower. The hardest part about these is you don't want to chase it as it goes lower. You want to go out and draw a trend line off that low, bring it up around the high. And what you want to do is, is grab the first test off the high of that channel. We saw a, a great example right here, right? Where it pops up, it runs down, kind of grinds down like that. What do you do? You don't chase it going lower, uh, trail off the lows, up around that high, and see what happens. It goes just a little bit above that prior swing right there, right? It's no wonder everybody wanted to whack that sucker back down again. That pattern, I call these V-tops, right? Basically a V-top off that high. The key is, is don't chase after it going lower. The bears want to go back to retest the low, so wait for it to pop up, and you can use a failure pattern, a bull trap pattern, a pullback combination pattern, any of the entry patterns I teach you guys in the free trading course, which reminds me, let's slow down for a second because I know most of you guys and gals watching right now, you've taken my free video classes, you've learned all these traps and failures and pullback combinations, you're making money with them, well done. But if you're here for the first time right now, if you're watching for the first time right now, this might be a brand new language for you. But don't you worry, I teach all these entry patterns. I have hundreds of examples of traps and failures and a whole lot more. I cover all this in a lot more detail in our free video classes. I'll put a little, a little link up top there for you. Don't you worry. Upper right-hand corner, grab that link that popped up there and take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that short video series will teach you a stupidly simple trick we use in our members trade room to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be each day. And then, of course, I want to help you guys start making money on your own. I'll teach you four of my favorite entry patterns. You'll definitely learn traps and failures and a whole lot more. Guys, the markets are way too good right now not to be making consistent money. If you're not getting the winners you want, if you're struggling with too many losses right now, if you're looking for an easy roadmap to know where the winning trades are going to be each day, hit the link up top. There's that link. Take that free course. I have hundreds of examples of the patterns we're talking about in this video. Also, to keep in mind too, I'm going to put all the important links tonight, the description of the YouTube video. I'll put the free class links down there for sure. We trade together every day in our trade room. I'll put trade room membership links down there for you. And also, too, I'm on Twitter or X a lot during the day. If you're on Twitter or on X, give me a follow. All the details, description of the YouTube video. But that will give you guys a place to learn more about all the entry patterns I've been talking about here so far. Now, I mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier that whenever we see this combination, right, big move and a break breakout, there are two different types of strategies we look for the following day. Right now, we're talking about one of those two strategies. In a moment, we'll grab the NASDAQ and we'll talk about that second core strategy, which is not as common, but it can be just as lucrative. So I'm going to make sure, you get, make sure you guys watch all the way to the end. Now, one more thing here, one more thing I want to bring to your attention here is, is that this is very bearish right now on the chart, and of course, sentiment right now is quite bearish as well. Again, I want to get that two-legged pullback, get up, right, and trap those buyers in and go back to retest that low. Remember, though, sometimes what happens is sometimes they'll pop up and get whacked right back down. You have to be careful with selling too high right now. For example, we talk about what's called shallow pullback traps a lot in our trade room. If we go up like this and we don't make it all the way up, you know what I mean? If all we get is a strong push up, we don't see a two-legged pullback. Sometimes we get some variations of this. If all we get is a push higher here and it gets whacked back down again, I want you to keep reminding yourself to sell as high as you possibly can. And to do that, it will always be a bull trap, all right? So we may not get, I, mean, I hope we do, right? We may not get that two-legged pullback. That's usually what happens in a big move breakout scenario like this. But you know what? With the war escalating in the Middle East right now, we may not get that. We may not get that. So if all we get is a strong shot up, and now as we start pulling back to that moving average, the buyers come in, they try to keep it going once, they run lower, keep an eye on these bull trap areas because that will likely be where the bears will be coming in and trying to get in as best they can, as high as they can, 
And remember, right, they're always going to be that lower low in price. And we're right above that high, that strong red candle closing firmly below the 21 EMA. The same rules you guys are learning, of course, in the free trading course. All right, guys. So that's the game plan here to trade that two-legged pullback. That's one of two very common scenarios or strategies we use after a big move and a range breakout. But now let's talk more about the secondary game plan, right? Not as common, but I'll tell you, it can be very lucrative if we get it on the NASDAQ. Now, NASDAQ, keep in mind, NASDAQ and the S&P are pretty much interchangeable. Everything we talk about on the S&P can be applied now to the NASDAQ and, and vice versa. The NASDAQ right now on the 60-minute time frame tells me now we are now an overall bear market. Now, go to our tick charts. You'll notice right away, too, this is a 4,000 tick chart, much lower than that 7,000 tick chart we had on the E-mini. The NASDAQ, of course, has less volume than the S&P. We have two really obvious clues right now. One, again, is that strong that big move down anytime we see a big move like this there are two strategies we look for we talked about one of them a moment ago on the s p that two-legged pullback and that retest of that low i'm going to talk about one more of those strategies here in a moment and just like the s p we have that big trading range above us and we know now that that range right there the underbelly of that range becomes the breakout pullback zone and my goodness, right, wouldn't that be great if we can get a nice two-legged pullback up into that area and back down to retest the low, get some of those bull traps we talked about a moment ago here on the S&P. So pretty much everything we talked about on the S&P can be applied now to the NASDAQ. It's basically the same exact situation here. Let's talk about now that secondary strategy, that second setup that we oftentimes get after a big move in one direction, and that would be a trading range. We may not have any bears down here take profit. It. Anybody who sold high up here, they're probably seeing the headlines right now. They're seeing uh, uh, Israel promise to retaliate again this afternoon. We may not get that nice deep pullback we want right now. This market may go sideways here in a trading range. Range markets can be very, very lucrative. You just have to learn the right strategy to capitalize on them. Now, first things first, ranges act like magnets and they love to rotate. Those are the two core kind of factors of range bond markets. They act like magnets and they love to rotate. This should be a review, by the way. This, this should be a reminder because we cover all this inside the free trading classes, right? So rotation and magnets. Now think about this. If I go lower and I'm bearish into a trading range, what I'm going to do is I want to find levels of resistance, right? Resistance, resistance up above me, and I want to short off of levels of resistance. Think about now that two-legged pullback, right? That one, that two. Think about now that range is a magnet below us. Get up into levels of resistance. Think about that one, two legs, a bit more than a measured move. And again, remember, we don't pick tops, right? We don't pick tops and bottoms. We trap rookies in. We wait for the buyers to try once, wait for the buyers to try twice, and we use that same failure pattern into, what was it again? That yeah, that bull trap pattern, that lower low in price, that trap high or that bull trap, whatever you want to call it, for that run back down again. Now, where this becomes fun is that now the amount above that trading range now gets projected down below. Remember I said earlier, ranges love to rotate and they use these things called what I call pendulum swings. The amount above the range can now be projected now down below the range. That will tell you now where this sucker wants to go. Right, So again, it's that same buyer failure pattern. We're not picking tops. It's that same bull trap pattern. We're not, right, we're not, we're not chasing it going lower either. Right, So it's a, it's a failure and a bull trap pattern running lower. What I always do is I always take some off, you know, half off, right, half off at the, right, at the low. There's usually going to be some trend line down here to a quarter off right right there on, on a triangle level and I'll leave the final quarter of that trade on until we reach that that measured move all right or, or that pendulum swing right off the off the high where things get oh oh and, and, and by the way too that same idea that same idea too where there's my range we may go one try two try we may get that one two back down again Every once in a while, they'll, they'll hold the top of that trading range because, again, breakout pullbacks, and they'll jump right back up. They jump it back in, right? Remember, remember that? Remember that double top reversal we mentioned earlier, right? It's that one, that two. It's basically the same exact trade. It's the same exact thing. I just want you to remember, though, that if we hold the top of that range and try again, this is not a reversal. 
All right, it's not a reversal. It needs to keep going quite a bit more. We have to see a lot more follow through for that reversal. In the meantime, once they take out that high or get anywhere near that high, this is a horrible spot to be a buyer. I would never want to buy up here after an overall bear market we're seeing right now on the 60 minute. So trap those bulls in that two try failure pattern. And again, on the way down, it's that same, it's same bull trap pattern going lower, right? So it's just, just going to be aware of that double top or even that V. V top, right? I mentioned earlier, V top, right? And get whacked back down again. Starts whacking back down here. What we do is off that, off that low, right? Off that high. And again, you can see pretty quickly here. These these work pretty well, pretty much across the board there. Right? There's one right here as well here on the Nasdaq, right? Goes running lower, starts grinding down off that low, off that high, right? Hit that first high off top of that channel. So same basic stuff there on the range. Where where things become more interesting, you want to pay attention right now on this because very, very important. Where things become interesting, and one of my favorite trades after a big move like this is, is oftentimes we get stuff like this where it'll go sideways, the market will try to run lower and then kick back up you know, and go higher here. It's important to remember that we're probably a little bit too bearish right now to grab a bottom on this. If you want to buy that bottom, this is where a crown reversal pattern comes in. We talk a lot about these in the free trading classes. It's, it's basically a bear trap pattern. It's a higher high in price and below that low. That will be the way you buy off the low of that of that trading range. Just remember though, we're, we're bearish overall. This would be a half size position, a quarter size position for many of us, maybe no position on that move going higher. What I wanna make sure you're aware of though is, is the amount below the range can then be applied back above the range. That gives us the best entry now. Again, we're not gonna pick the top on that. We'll wait for those bulls to finish off their squeeze going higher. We're gonna wait for that 21 EMA to come over and see what happens with the pullback, right? Sometimes they hold the pullback and we keep going. That's a reversal. Most of the times though, not. Most of the time it'll pop up. Rookies will chase after it. Big lot traders are, are building their positions, selling into it, and the buyers will come in and walk right into a bull trap. Once those buyers try a couple times, then we know where their stops are. Then we know where their pain is. Then we know where those buyers become sellers to fuel this move going lower. And again, because we know that ranges like to rotate, the amount above the range can now project down below the range. We know where that target now is on the way back down. So the most important thing I want, to, I want to keep in mind is, is just be careful as it goes lower. Oftentimes, oftentimes you will see a, you will see a big move down like this into a trading range. It's already quite oversold. It'll run lower. Do not chase after it. They have to hold that pullback and go. That to be a valid breakout. What we want to do though is, is if we can get those bear traps, right? One try, two try, squeeze off of that low. But again, the most important trade here is, is that rotation, right? Up, one, two, and back down, we go from there. So whether or not whether or not you have the, uh, the gut to take that bear trap off the low, again, this is a much lower percentage trade because we're so bearish overall, but that's how you would do it, blow that low. Just don't chase after it selling short down here. Okay, don't fall, don't fall for that fake out breakout. Wait for that rotation back up, and that's usually where the easier money is made, the top of that trading range. All right, guys, that's the game plan here for tomorrow. Two-legged pullback or a trading range. Either way, now we're ready for whatever the market throws at us on Tuesday morning. Now, that's the game plan for tomorrow. But don't forget, though, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, the easiest way to start making consistent money in any of these markets is to come out and learn this stuff and trade with us every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. I'll put all the important links, the free class links, the membership to the trade room links, and, of course, all the details, description of the video tonight. Hope you learned a bunch in tonight's lesson. Hope you use this knowledge, use this game plan, game plan to make a bunch tomorrow. And hopefully, I'll see you sometime soon trading with us, making money with us in the morning trade room. In the meantime, be well, be nice to each other out there, and you better be here tomorrow night. We'll do it again. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.